Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. This project is an evolution of another project. Some time ago I turned a star. Before that I turned yet another star. The first star was uh, modeled after Theo from Australia, I understand. Required a jig. Second one I derived from the Ornament Challenge, which will come again in November, uh, which involved just using a mandrel. And this time I said, I want to do a little bit more. I want to have it more pointed. So this is the sort of thing. Start with a cube. Just one word of advice. Make this cube just as perfect as you can. Then you drill holes in each face. Again, make those as perfectly centered as you possibly can. The difference comes out when you turn the star and you find that sometimes if you have been off center that you have a point that is very small and other points that are very big. Now how much of that you can tolerate is up to you but in the end I like it because I can add finials to it around on each side and to me this is the best star yet that I've been able to make in wood turning. So let's make and turn this star. Preparation for this project involved cutting a 1 and 7 8 inch cube. This cube needs to be as accurate as possible. Then mark center on each face, punch and drill a quarter inch hole just over halfway from each face. The pins on the split mandrel are too long. Couple of bushings reduce their effective length. Mine are 3D printed. Now the cube is mounted on the lathe on the mandrel. I chose to mount for cross grain cutting for the first pass, hoping to reduce splintering in later mountings. With a freshly sharpened spindle gouge, I can start cutting a shallow cove. I need to make sure the cove is centered on the face holes. I work primarily from the center out, taking special care as I approach the corners. As the cut progresses, the center cuts into solid wood where the cut is consistent. However, out near the corners, it is always an interrupted cut. This first cut establishes the depth for the next two mountings. Now to sand. I am proud to say that to start with 80 grit as it is the most efficient next cutting tool. The paper conforms to the curve and always removes high spots. This sandpaper is cloth back so I can hold it on both ends to keep my fingers away while letting the middle do its thing. Now to rotate the cube to another set of opposing holes. I could have turned the first part without the bushings on the mandrel. However, now the distance between the sides is shorter, making the bushings a requirement. Now approach the cut almost the same as the first mounting. However, now the cut is even more interrupted as it crosses the first cove. The corners are even more fragile. Since near the corner the cut is cutting even more air, it is easy to cut too deep. The cut has to be well controlled. A shear cut also works great. There's very little bevel to ride. Sand again. Sand, but more interrupted. The only point of continuous cut is at the hole in each face. Each cove must be cut and sanded to the same depth, but measuring is useless. The only way is to assess the cove depth at the intersection at the hole. Last mounting. Did I say the cut was interrupted before? Even more so now as there is less wood going out to each corner. Any variance in cutting the cube or drilling the face holes becomes very obvious. Some variance is okay, but not too much. How much is too much? That's your call. Sand again. I cannot say much more than I've said before. Remember that 80 grit is your friend. It is another gouge. This is my last chance to sand yet again. The lathe is off. With fine sandpaper, I want to ease over the now very sharp edges.
Keeping the star on the lathe is simply to hold it securely. This process leaves a hole in each face. If I do not like this, I could use the jig base process. I'm choosing to turn a finial for each hole again from maple. I do not need the finials to be the stars of the show. I'll spare you the spindle roughing and the first tenon to get the spindle mounted to a long nose jaws. I measure for a half inch tenon and a one and three quarter inch for the finial. This tenon is too long, but I need it for mounting later. Now to cut the quarter inch diameter tenon. Gross peeling cuts with my skew, followed by a 5 6 inch tenon cutter, followed by a quarter inch tenon cutter. This leaves the tenon about 10 thousandths oversized, but I'll accommodate that later with a slightly larger drill bit into the star body. I cut a simple shape. Again, the finial is not the star of the show. My half inch skew is my preferred tool as it leaves a very clean cut. Time to sand. I can start sanding this finial with 180 grit. I follow the sanding with shellac friction polish, then part off the finial. With the finial reversed, the tenon is now in the chuck. I need to drill a 1 16th inch hole for mounting with TIG welding rod. This small drill flexes way too much. I swap for a small machinist center drill to standard and start the hole. Then swap back for the 1 16th inch drill for depth. All that is left now is to sand and apply more shellac. That was for one finial. I need one more exactly the same, but no hole. The longer finials are for the top and bottom, then four more about a half inch shorter for side holes. This will complete my star. It will be a part of another larger composition with an Easter theme. But that is all for now. I like it with the additional depth of cove and the smaller size compared to my first one of the style. It will be perfect. Keep watching for the end Easter composition. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my website as well as on YouTube. Please spread the word by telling your friends about my weekly videos. I also appreciate your comments and questions, but please wear your full face shield whenever the lathe is running. I hate to nag, but are you wearing yours at the lathe?